Free trade is in our DNA, and we want trade with China, as much of it as we can get. From a golden era of economic relations with China. Now let's be clear, the so-called golden era is over, along with the naive idea that trade would automatically lead to social and political reform. To the era of economic fear and even loathing towards the world's second largest economy. The threat of China cannot be seen primarily as an economic one, because to do so is to fail to recognise that they are trying to undermine our security and our sovereignty. The golden era culminated in a state visit for the Chinese leader in 2015. And remember the original post-Brexit Global Britain vision. That hoped for more trade with China, more investment from China, and also a new trade deal with the United States. But since then, from China, we've had broken promises to Hong Kong, hostility towards Taiwan, internal repression. And from the US, we've had what some have called a new Cold War with China and a policy of friendshoring industrial supply chains. That leaves the global Britain vision looking pretty precarious, to say the least. So is the UK in danger of being stranded between two continents in terms of its economic policy, between China and the US? Two continents which seem to be moving inexorably further apart. Remember the term BRICS and the argument that the century would be shaped by the fast-growing economies of Brazil, Russia, India, South Africa and, of course, China. The economist who coined it says it would be folly for the UK to economically disengage from China. Are we literally trying to say we will only embrace trade and investment relationships with only countries that want to be exactly like us? Which, by the way, what on earth is being like us like anymore, anyhow? I mean, it's, it's kind of madness. There's only a limit to how many countries you can go around saying we don't want your, your money or we don't want your investment. Can you be putting UK farmers out of business, Mr Morrison? And those new post-Brexit trade deals with the likes of Australia and New Zealand? Are you selling out British farmers, Prime Minister? Which one of you is going to get the better deal? Oh, they just won't compensate arithmetically for disengaging from China. Even uh, with all China's own economic challenges, looking forward, uh, it's going to add way more to annual GDP changes for the world than anywhere in the ex-British colonies, with the possible exception of India. So I just don't get uh, the scale of this sort of popularity thing about bashing China, you know, to me as an economist, it's just kind of bananas. But some analysts argue economics and national security are two sides of the same coin when it comes to China and should not, cannot be separated when it comes to things like Chinese involvement in the Hinkley Point nuclear power station in Somerset or the involvement of a firm like Huawei in building the UK's 5G networks, which became a bone of contention between the US and Britain until the UK ultimately bowed to US pressure and ordered its removal. Mr. President, are you prepared to impose limits on intelligence sharing with Britain if they do not put in place some restrictions on Huawei? No, because we're going to have absolutely an agreement on Huawei and everything else. So if you have China operating a bit of critical infrastructure, say a nuclear power plant, you have to, that's a 50 year bet that nothing is going to go wrong politically between you and China or between the United States and China. That's not a bet I would particularly like to make. It is the case, given the new security laws in China, that no Chinese company can refuse a request from the government for information. Information can be a security risk also. So, Frankly, I would, when we're looking at a public sector contract, not always go for the cheapest because it might be the cheapest for the wrong reasons. It might be a Trojan horse. It might, if, if it looks safe now, it might not be safe in the future. But could the UK chart a third way, refusing to pick sides? Emmanuel Macron has urged the European Union not to be a follower, 
in a US economic cold war on Beijing. But can Britain, with its ingrained transatlanticism, its special relationship, realistically resist US economic pressure? I think the Biden administration expects basically everybody to totally follow their line. Some combination of we'll bully you and we're right and therefore you'll fall in line. I think they're going to be mildly uh, disappointed or surprised when it turns out that even the UK, even Japan, of course Germany and France, even Australia are not going to tow the US line. I think if the UK aligns with others, and the others in the U.S. stand up to the U.S. in a clear way, a somewhat coordinated way, it'll be better for all and it'll be less likely for the U.S. to bully or retaliate. And could there perhaps be unexpected economic benefits for the U.K. if it gets this balance right? I think the U.K. has a lot more to gain from separating itself from the U.S. to a certain degree. Stick with the U.S on national security, but don't go into the excesses of economic warfare. In particular, I think the UK can benefit from continuing to export higher education, to get investment for R&D within the UK, and to avoid particular military technologies, but still have plenty of room for cultural exports. How are you? Good. Good to see you again. Yeah, very good to see you. Very good to see you. Some say non-alignment would actually be the only economically sensible course for post-Brexit Britain to chart, just as India, for instance, remained non-aligned between the US and the Soviet Union during the original Cold War. Lots of countries will try to benefit from the US-China uh, economic uh, uh, disengagement to a certain extent and if the UK only sides with one party I'm not sure it's the smartest thing to do don't side and um, India has always been very uh, smart and never taking any sides it's fine to push China back on certain economic rules and practices and look the Chinese are open to negotiations and talking the UK and the Chinese economy are highly complementary uh, UK uh, needs uh, investment. China has plenty of investment. China uh, looks to UK's innovative power, uh, knowledge economy. Uh, it sees uh, the country as as a hub, uh, even though with Brexit, but still a very important uh, global hub. No one thinks the golden era of economic relations with China is coming back. The challenge today to walk a razor's edge and make a living in an economically polarizing world.